Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled More Than Meets the Eye, a line of evidence through the clinician's eye. Now this was a lecture given by Nikolish Vade. It was part of the International Orthodontic Foundation's online symposium with Ravi Nanda and Co. So just to recap, the podcast is the independent work of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. It may not be 100% representative of the original lecture, but we do our best to ensure that it is. So getting back to the lecture, so Nicholas Raid spoke about the evidence related to clear aligner therapy and the second half of the lecture was really looking at Nicholas's own research endeavours and what he had learnt about aligners, specifically their effectiveness, their wear regimes and number of refinements and it gave some really good insight as to what we actually understand overall about aligners and how we should be clinically using them. So to start off with looking at the evidence which is available when it comes to aligners. When Nicholas did a comprehensive search and found over 7,000 papers dedicated to the topic. However, only 39 of those were prospective clinical trials and there were 20 systematic reviews. And there was a general theme to the conclusions from the systematic reviews that there wasn't enough good clinical trials to base a systematic review on. And it seems to be a strange hierarchy we have for clear line of therapy where we have lots of systematic reviews but not good clinical or enough clinical trials underneath it and it needs something which needs to be addressed so anyway what did the systematic reviews look at well they looked at treatment outcomes when it comes to clear aligner therapy and have concluded that for mild to moderate cases clear aligner therapy works effectively the alignment was good however when it comes to more complex malocclusion managements such as vertical sagittal or transverse discrepancies it's a challenge for clear aligner therapy in summary when it comes to looking at fixed appliances things just don't fit as well as it would do comparatively now nicholas did have a caveat here he said it depends on what outcomes we're looking at to answer this question and actually if we're looking at things such as clincheck superimpositions or digital setup superimpositions we haven't got a comparison for fixed appliances where we don't have such predictability measurements. And this was a really interesting topic that I've previously written as a guest blog on Kevin O'Brien's orthodontic blog exploring this in more detail, so please do check that out. Other things systematic reviews have looked at, well they looked at the side effects of clear aligner therapy and the consensus seems to indicate that clear aligner therapy has less periodontal effects than fixed appliances and has less apical root resorption. However, we have poor studies in this sector and actually need more studies to reach firmer conclusions as to what actually are the bad effects of clear aligner therapy. Other things researchers looked at, when they looked at the force levels, and this is a really contradictory sector to the research so far and shows conflicting results as to the actual amount of force delivery that takes place. When it comes to pain, we have less pain elicited from clear aligner therapy for the first few weeks. After that, things generally tend to balance themselves out again. When it comes to looking at the quality of life, the little evidence that we have about clear aligner therapy shows less disturbance when it comes to eating, which makes sense. Nicholas's conclusion was is that although we have a large number of systematic reviews, we still don't have enough quality evidence to reach firm conclusions. Now he retorted back to a statement from Papa Giorgio's systematic review, stating there's not enough evidence to support clear aligner therapy use. And his retort was, actually this doesn't mean that it doesn't work, it just means that we haven't got the evidence yet to show that it does. And therefore we need more primary clinical trials. Nicholas then spoke about his research, and this was in three areas, the effectiveness of aligners, the wear regimes, and looking at refinements, all very topical clinical questions. So the first one, looking at the effectiveness of aligners, this was a really interesting exploration into research. So Nicholas with uh, Neil Kravitz and co carried out a study back in 2009 and repeated it again in 2020 under the authorship of Haluli. Now, what they looked at was how well have aligners work when it comes to their predictability. Now what they've shown over the last decade or so, there has been an improvement into how effective aligners are. The labial lingual movement and the maxillary arch is better, rotational control is better by around 12%. However, when it comes to mandibular arch changes, actually, things still haven't changed very much. It still seems to be a more problematic arch. When it comes to looking at deep bite cases, we are only 50% predictable for our deep bite resolution. And that's, that's in tally with the previous study by Al Baha, which looked at CBCT changes with clear line of therapy and showed around about the same statistics. And Nicholas spoke about his unpublished research looking at, well, what are the outcomes of clear line of therapy? And they used the ABO OGS score. And what they found was that 60% of aligner cases passed that particular outcome. 
Now we've got to put that in comparison to something. So when it comes to looking at fixed appliances from Niklesh's research, that was closer towards 80%. So we're still 20% short with clear line of therapy. Interestingly, lingual appliances were at the top end at around about 90%. What about when it comes to wearing off aligners? Now this was an interesting study by Nadori and Nicholas Raid back in 2021. And they simply looked at seven day, 10 day and 14 day wear when it came to aligners. And essentially found that for overall tooth movements, there was no significant difference when it came to linear values, i.e. moving teeth backwards and forwards or side to side. However, when it came to angular changes, i.e. for rotations and most commonly posteriorly, this research favored 10 to 14 day changes for our liners versus our seven day changes. And what Nicholas put forward was this, was this idea of using dynamic aligner changes. The idea that we customize it for our patients depending on the movement and the responses the patients has had so far. The third study Nicholas looked at was looking at refinements when it comes to clear aligner therapy. And the idea is that do we know how many refinements patients need? So he did a really large study looking at three centers, over 500 patients, and looked at how many of them needed refinement aligners. What he concluded was that nearly 60% of patients needed one to three sets of refinement aligners. Now, what was interesting is that the most common number in here was one set of refinement aligners. Interestingly, 16% needed no refinement aligners, but 16% needed more than four sets of refinement aligners. What Nicholas's conclusion was is for the average patient, what we plan initially, we will usually need 50% more, i.e. over 108% from the initial planned aligners, the patient will actually need to get to our end conclusion of our treatment. And what Nicholas's final take home message on this topic was, was that refinements are non-negotiable when it comes to our patients. They will need to have refinements of sorts, more than likely one set of refinement aligners. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please do subscribe and as always look forward to the next episode.